Oh. Hi there. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is our stand-up. We're going to start out with FPGA work and then go into office hours. Uh, what we do is we talk about what we've done over the past week, what we're going to be doing over the next week, and if there's any resources that we need and any roadblocks that we have. All right. So, uh, Paul, why don't you lead us off? Well, I do not have very much to report, considering it's been a long time since we've had the last meeting. Um, the uh, remote lab is cooking away. Yeah, we did a little bit of maintenance over the over the break. Uh, we took off for the holiday and uh, did some maintenance uh, upgrades and updates uh, to the to the Unraid server, uh, which was was good. Everything went really well. Um, so thank you very much for keeping it running smoothly. It's kind of nice to not have any <laughs> lengthy reports about maintenance or setup. Um, and we we had an additional inquiry over the break about uh, asking how we how we set it up and how we did it. So I was able to simply point them at the documentation that we have on GitHub, and they said it was uh, pretty useful. So okay. good news there. The routines were very, or the updates were very routine. Just the software as it trickles out from the from the makers trying to keep up with it. Yeah, no, so far so good. It seems to be to be working with us. It's a little bit unusual since um, most of the university labs that we looked at uh, initially when we set the place up, we're using LabVIEW, um, you know, a different approach to, to setting up a, a remote lab. So going with Unraid has worked for us. So thank you, appreciate it. Um, yeah, no, I've been uh, extremely busy, but I have not done a whole lot in the FPGA lab other than read uh, FPGA papers, which have been, uh, that's been quite the experience uh, over the past couple of weeks. Uh, so I've learned a lot uh, about FPGA design, some of which is useful and some of which is, is kind of not for what we're doing. We picked up another FPGA volunteer, uh, he's from India. And um, he works for MATLAB or MathWorks, uh, and and enjoys his day job, but wanted to uh, do more algorithmic uh, algorithm implementation on hardware. And he's uh, interested in working on Opulent Voice, which is our uplink protocol for our terrestrial and satellite work. And so he's very interested in, in Opulent Voice and would like to help move that to hardware. So I had a great meeting with him over the past couple of weeks, and I hope that he'll be able to join us and um, and participate like in these meetings and and on Slack as well. And if not, then I'll just keep working with him individually. It's uh, it's been not really nice. Um, and Onshul is now in a completely different time zone, so he's uh, has been a, a frequent uh, attendee of these meetings. He is now in India, so his time zone is different. And what we've done is set up a meeting. Um, for now we have multiple people in India. So we've set up a meeting later in the day on Tuesdays. I think Tuesdays will be our meeting day and that, uh, that one we'll try to have later today. And I think, uh, you're going to lead that meeting today. I should be able to do it moving forward, um, move my schedule around. So yeah, I think we'll keep, try to keep meetings on Tuesdays and Fridays, uh, for, we have some people who do not work on Fridays and it's really nice to be able to get their time uh, during the day for review um, meeting this past Friday was was really good. Had a another similar meeting yesterday for identifying particular places to to do research proposals. So that's a little bit of what I've been up to uh, in terms of of lab work and and FPGA design. And that's I think that's it for for me. So I'll hand it over to Sasha. Okay, I found the unmute button, and yeah, so I've been looking at, I, I ended up deciding on an RF synthesizer to do the up conversion, and also just for testing purposes, the down conversion as well, and yeah, I ordered some dev boards, and I'm going to try and see the next, like, the next week or two to get a workspace set up, and to get those dev boards working, and I also did, I'm also installing like FPGA toolchain stuff, both Yosis and Vivado. I'm going to try and get the DDB FPGA uh, gateway, for lack of a better term, 
compiled and working and flash to the Plutos and yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Kind of at a crossroads, just getting getting the stuff set up. And I guess the rule is just to try and get the up up conversion down conversion working and piping it into like a DVBS two receiver card and and seeing if I if it all works and seeing how how much the signal gets distorted from all of that. And yeah, that's kind of it for me. Well, that's plenty. Yeah. Uh, let me know how I can help. Um, it should be available, be available almost, every, almost day. every day. Will do. Cool. Okay. All right. So um, I think the next person up is Rick. Well, I don't have anything much to say. I've been watching and Hoping you'd have some great successes. Uh, I have been spending this long duration uh, since the last meeting, first on customer support. I had major problems there, but I've also been working on something I didn't think I would be interested in, but remote ham radio site. <clears throat> Sort of like your remote lab. Uh, a gentleman has donated all kinds of equipment to the Deep Space Exploration Society. And we've been setting up remote access to this HF and VHF station, which is out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and I'm learning a lot about remote uh, operations. So I'm setting up my own lab for remote operations uh, of my equipment uh, using similar techniques to what they're doing. Uh, but I also got involved with uh, a different part of the Deep Space Exploration Society, that is their, uh, their 20 meter dish, which they're using for uh, both ham radio and space science. And I recently, uh, contacted the, uh, uh, what is the name of it now, the Planetary Society in Germany, uh, which has also a 60 meter dish, uh, Volcom Observatory, which is being managed by AMSAT DL. And so I contacted Peter and we're, uh, and I talked to the board of the Deep Space uh, Exploration Society, and we're going to try to set up some uh, very long baseline interferometry experiments between uh, Colorado and Germany, and possibly a third 60 meter dish in New Jersey, which is interested in working on this. So I've gotten sort of sidetracked. But uh, has any of that got to do with FPGAs? Yes. <laughs> All of these dishes are managed by FPGA arrays for uh, both uh, management of the dishes and for uh, uh, for the receivers uh, on their uh, on them. So, so I've gotten back to uh, trying to beat my FPGA designs into submission and I'm actually making some progress there. So uh, if I get to a point where where I'm actually able to do useful work, maybe I'll be able to help you out <clears throat> with something. I'm not sure what. Right now it's a matter of technology and getting back in the saddle again after quite a while of doing other things. But I'm watching what you're doing. Okay, very good. Yeah, um, uh, many of us that, that are our members of DSES and are familiar with the work and uh, Bauckham as well. So good deal. All right, over the next week, we are going to uh, continue the process of working through the wonderful uh, free book from uh, Analog Devices that uh, walks you through the Pluto and how to use it and access the uh, FPGA stuff on it. Um, we've had a whole lot of luck here and discovered some interesting things with the Pluto loopback, uh, which you can see on Slack. Uh, we're not really sure why our um, 
what were the results that we got look a little bit different. The constellation has some some interesting distortions in it. So uh, as a side project, uh, it's helping us uh, go through and, and look at our particular station. Um, and in addition to that, we're uh, we have of course the 706 and uh, and uh, ADRV 9371 um, up and running. There's been a lot of progress from uh, Swato on the encoder. So he's got several updates that have come through over, uh, if you've noticed on, on GitHub operations channel on Slack, you can see that there's been some updates to his code base. We do not yet have his updates to the DBBS2 and S2X encoder uh, folded into um, the bitstream that we're using in remote labs, but that's uh, on the agenda to get that incorporated. And what that means is that our uh, our particular approach, which is to to have one repository that you download and and build uh, in order to use the the remote lab, is going to have to get some some attention. Uh, what we we've been doing is uh, really heavily leveraging submodules in in Git in order to pull in the analog devices reference design and then pull in our custom IP and put that in the middle. Uh, and then update the uh, tackle script that that hooks everything up. Uh, and then we also wrote uh, essential, essentially a bus expander that uh, efficient bus expander. Um, so all of that, we're going to roll that and move it forward and make it uh, more efficient and uh, sort of a better repository to have so that that less and less that you have to do as an individual. Uh, in order to get it to, to work for you on a, a high-end dev station. Uh, so those are the things that, that are kind of like we've noticed happening over the past couple of weeks and, and see happening. Um, big steps forward in some really nice open source code for encoders. On the receiver side, I was able to, to talk with a couple of local folks, um, uh, Fred Harris at uh, the IEEE uh, annual meeting uh, over the past weekend. Um, and talk about the our sort of our polyphase or multi-rate approach to the receiver. Um, so I can't really share a lot about all of his recent work because it has to do with proprietary stuff for Starlink, but uh, we are definitely on the right track and that's very exciting to hear. Um, so what we're gonna do is continue to leverage the, the various open source uh, libraries and stuff that we have available to us that we've been planning on using. and this sort of receiver approach will take in the the opulent voice uplink uh, that we were working hard to to kind of bring alive so all the different parts uplink downlink and the receiver are are making some amount of progress uh it's good very good to see we should have some publications and some posters and some work um shown over, you know coming up over the next quarter um but the one thing that we've been talking about that we haven't really addressed other than putting it on a whiteboard and doing some, some good papers and simulations is the multiplexing part and the sort of the quality of service decisions on how to take the streams coming in uh, and then how to present them to the downlink. I know Onshul is very interested in that and there's a couple of other folks that are interested in that and have some industry experience. Uh, that's one of the things that I'd like to, to continue to kind of raise up to the attention of the various teams um, that we we need to start maybe being a little more concerned about that aspect of the design. Um, anyway, we're, we're in good shape uh, moving forward and uh, still have plenty of opportunities to, to demonstrate and show over the next year. We're gonna concentrate mainly on, I think DEF CON as a big demonstration uh, opportunity. Uh, we will not be at Hamcation. I went ahead and closed out our uh, our reservations and our booth at Hamcation. Um, we probably will have a, a more limited presence at uh, QSO Today Ham Expo in March because the theme of the March show is new hams. So I think we'll probably step back a little bit from that show and let uh, people, uh, beginners and, and new hams, I've got my license now, what? is essentially the the theme for that. Uh, we will have at least one or two uh, presentations at QSO Today Ham Expo that are good. Uh, 
a ribbit project is probably going to show and maybe maybe versatin uh we'll have some some folks at uh at hamvention um but our next big demonstration show will be at the radio frequency village in in defcon and also at ims um, international micro society uh, ieee we have an opportunity to to present there in the in the sort of the the main pavilion for for demonstrations and also at the uh the amateur radio social so that's going to be in the summer uh, so anyway that's the things that are coming up that sort of provide us uh, deadlines and opportunities to show the work uh, so i guess my plan here uh, for, you know from now that we're kicking off our our weekly meetings and and our weekly reports again for the year is to just really head down and uh and do the work and uh you know then we'll show uh, you know later in the future at uh, at either IMS or and or uh, defcon so that's the that's the general outline for the for 2023 and uh yeah plenty of of good support and good feedback and additional volunteers our our funding is in great shape so we are really limited only by the usual sorts of things uh time <laughs> and uh and and that's 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 pretty much it so we should have a very very good 2023 uh, thank you to everybody that is uh contributed and supported and showed up today all right so i'm going to turn the floor back over to everybody else any questions or comments or uh information that we need to know about all right good deal we'll have another meeting in uh in a little bit in this af this afternoon uh for by my time it'll be at uh uh, 1400 at 2 p.m. U.S. Pacific, and uh, and we'll we'll meet again weekly moving moving forward with the same schedule. So so at 10 a.m. U.S. Pacific and 2 p.m. U.S. Pacific, and if we need to add any other meetings to that, uh, we will. All right, thank you everybody. That concludes our our meeting for today. <laughs>